And it was Straight Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com. And sometimes I see these images that I'm allowed to use and I start laughing. What the heck is going on here? This is about the dumbest thing I've ever seen. What is, what is the goal here of these elastics? Sometimes dentists just toss in elastics on um, for no reason. That That's actually not going to make any benefit or it might make things worse from what you're trying to do. So when I look at this case, and granted these are the limited records I've been given, I see a slight class 3 case um, that obviously hasn't been addressed because there's chains everywhere um, with negative overjet and edge to edge to crossbite, anterior crossbite occlusion. Um, clearly this patient is class three and they haven't come up with a way that they're fixing the class three. Unless the child is growing, a face mask, which is the gold standard, is not gonna be able to be used. So I'm assuming this is not a child and it's out or the patient is not growing. That leaves lower incisor extraction, a lot of lower IPR, or taking out lower third molars and doing sequential distalization or depending on what the CEF says, of course you have to look at the CEF, you have to look at the inclinations of the incisors, maxillary and mandibular relative to the jaws and the cranial base. Or if the upper incisors are very, very upright and trapped, sometimes we can just open up some spaces around six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or seven, eight, nine, ten, or sometimes just seven and ten. It depends on how big you can have those. I mean, these don't look like peggy laterals, so I think you'd have to do it pretty much everywhere. Um, otherwise, you're going to have just some massive crowns that aren't going to be even and flare everything forward, leaving little spaces everywhere and then crowns six through 11 or upper three to three. Um, and in so that will jump the bite. But again, you have to check the stuff first. Can you do that? Or are we pushing teeth through the bone in order to do that? I don't know if we can do that. I don't have a stuff here. Um, same thing goes with the lower IPR. If you just do a, but a lower IPR, I hope that this patient is not young because you're gonna take out all their protective enamel. If they're older, maybe you can, like 50, 60, 70. Maybe you can, um, but that, what's that, what is that gonna do? That is going to actually retract the lower incisors. That, in doing so, it's very difficult to control the root. You may throw the root through the bone. You may put the loading forces on those lower incisors so they're not in a healthy position for life which may cause perio issues, which may cause all kinds of other issues down the line. You need to see, can I even do the IPR? If the teeth are flared, heck yeah, I can do the IPR. Great, sounds great on the lower, let's do it. Teeth are upright, no, I'm not doing the IPR. So, you know, and that's the same thing with a lower incisor extraction. If the teeth are retroclined, no, that's probably not a good idea. But um, if they're procline, sure, that's a wonderful idea. I love that idea. Lastly, that leaves taking out lower third molars, assuming that you have enough space back there behind the second molar and the stat in the ramus, you might be able to do something called sequential distillation with aligners. Not all aligner brands do that. So those are your options. Or of course, there's jaw surgery. That's another option. It is also the gold standard. It is standard of care. I'm not saying everybody wants it for something this minor where it's probably not necessary. Something that's very severe, yeah, it's necessary. And we also might be impacting the position of the tongue and the airway. Um, and I know that's a gray area, so I don't want people saying, well, the ADA says there's no research. Yeah, the ADA says no research because there's been no good research done yet. It will happen. And like I tell you guys, every single orthodontist out there who has a brain um, and isn't like 90 years old, if you ask them straight out, if your best friend, if your sister, if your wife, if your kid, how to bite like this, what would you do, you know? And I think pretty much all of them would say, I wouldn't wanna make, I would check to see if there was airway or breathing issues or, or sleep issues. I certainly wouldn't wanna make that cavity, the parking garage smaller, definitely not. No, I'm not doing that, um, not, mm -mm, you know, even when people think that's the easy way out, but I'm not doing that. I'm making everything bigger. I know on my kids, my goal is to make everything bigger, wider, more forward. And, and both of my husband and I are dentists and we both agreed on that. So, and we feel really good about the choices that we made. A lot of these kids that are in school, and I hate to say it, I know that there's no connection, that people say there's no written connection, but there's a connection. I 100% believe it in my gut and I got nothing to profit off this. So, because I see it, I've been working with kids my whole life, babysitting a nanny, and I started to see the parallels between weird malocclusions constricted faces and sh crappy behavior. I mean, sorry, there's got to be a connection. It just, the research is not showing up in our lifetime. You're not going to probably see it. There's just too much strings on this. So you know what? 
If you know there's two, di two different treatment options, get the information and make sure the patient is being screened for airway, you know, if you have concerns. All right, thanks.